people. I'm sitting here trying well, to do an him. interview, and he's taking phone calls. I'm in demand. Okay. <laughs> I demand your attention. You should do outtakes sometime. Do it. I know. I'll do a outtake clip. I, I should. That's and that you, should you sitting there trying to fix your hair would be... That'd be totally <laughs> Me trying to fix my hair. Outtake. That would be like the whole show. I know. Yeah. My hair is just like has a... It's, it's its own character, actually, in the show. Is my hair. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it certainly is. Most women think that. No, I look on the, I look at the replay and I'm like, what is up with my hair? And I don't have to pay attention to anything else. Cause like, <laughs> all right, this is why I need hair and makeup. All right. So here we go. Welcome to the spirit centered business podcast, where we blend the spiritual with the practical for supernatural results. Now here's your host, Berlin Newby. business i am here with doug talks one of her favorite guests exactly the director of the life bridge ministries yes okay i didn't that's know if you still called it seo a, seo terminology got it so okay but more importantly he's a really good friend <laughs> and my former occasional friend <laughs> my former co-host on risky faith tv and we don't get along i was also doing. prior to that a co-host of the Patriot and Preacher ra oh, national that's radio right. show. Right, you. And then I went. No. no. Oh. <laughs> no. <laughs> yeah, I was a co-host on there. The yeah, Patriot that's and right. Yeah. yeah. We need to ri revive Risky Faith. At least do something. We need to revive it in us. <laughs> revive it in us. Well, we're we're, anyway. we're practicing on that right now. We're you know. I know for spirit center business. This is maybe good. you need to have me as a guest like once. A quarter or whatever. You heard it. You heard it. Yes, Something I would like do, absolutely yeah. do that. Okay, so last time we talked about risk and taking risk. And I know that we could go way down that road. But I need you to talk about relationships in business. And because I know that you have a brilliant um, methodology for the bond that yeah. we create. So yeah. I want you to talk about what you do and then relate it to business. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah. Um, so we have a part of our organization, the LifeBridge. We offer uh, coaching and counseling, but we also do uh, marriage retreats. And it's a big deal that uh, these marriage retreats we do. And the focus of the marriage retreats is on the, the, the marriage bond. And everybody has, everybody who has a relationship develops a bond with that person. Mm -hmm. And there's different kinds of bonds. So In the marriage my language bond is, is very quantum unique. entanglement. Quantum <laughs> entanglement. Well, we but have there's, there's a, there's we have a a engineers deeper. who come to our marriage retreats and they've never called it that. But that's okay. <laughs> yeah, no. Well, that's be, quantum entanglement is yeah. you, you could just be like in the same bus station at the same time and there's an entanglement. Okay. We're talking about really developing a nurturing bond yeah. that has, you know, yeah. cardionosis. Like, yes, yeah. there is some cardio. And neurological gnosis, very powerful. Uh, there's been all kinds of research done on the relationship bond. So mm -hmm. they, uh, some of the earliest research on the bond between two, uh, two people or groups of people was done with infants. And it's a famous study that um, a lot of people have read about it. And mo a lot of people think that it was, uh, well, it did happen in Russia, but they would put all these newborns in a room uh -huh. and all they did was feed them and they started dying. Isn't that horrible? So if you meet somebody in a quantum entanglement on a bus and you don't feed them, they're not going to die. So we are talking about a different kind of bond. <laughs> different kind of bond. And in other words, More so the bond, because I really want to, uh, you know, establish that the bond that we're talking about, there's, there's different you know, they, the so phrase right now about essential business and, you know, non-essential business. Uh -huh. There are, we have bonds that are not essential. That's true. But then we have some bonds that are essential. So by nature, by the nature, spiritually and at every level, uh, the bonds that are most obviously essential are between a husband and wife and a parent and child. But then when you go to the next layer, it's at work. You either have a bond with your your supervisor, someone above you, 
in the hierarchy, or you have uh, uh, bonds that you establish with people below you. So that's another essential arena because all three of those areas with your children, with your spouse, and with your business, all three of those areas require performance and productivity. Mm -hmm. Different yeah. kinds of performance and productivity. A, a marriage has to be productive. And, and a, a, a relationship with a child or children has to be productive. And of course, we know when we go to work, it has to be productive. Yeah. We know that uh, what makes... Um, because the, the, uh, the uh, 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 objective of work or, or a, a, a business is to be productive, to produce and be productive at the highest level possible. Mm -hmm. So the question is, if you were just going to do it from a research level, what encourages productivity and performance is the word I was looking for. Performance, and because performance influences productivity. Mm -hmm. So what encourages that? And in many uh, sectors of business, even, even in family, marriage and family, people don't always look at the bond. They don't always go, what's the status, what's the condition of the relationship bond? Right. And they should because all kinds of research, not at every, research at every level mm -hmm. says the condition of the bond, of the relate, the bond that's in, the, the bond is, the bond, I can, I'll define the bond more, but the bond, the relationship that you have mm -hmm. has a greater impact on those areas, performance and, and uh, productivity, than most other things do. It's one of the highest influ uh, influencers of those things. It totally makes sense because if you, it's all about influence. It's all about who you have a bond with. You know, if you've got good influence and in, with your suppliers, then... Yeah. You know, if something happens and you can't pay right away, they'll still, you know, give you a little bit of leeway or a little grace. Whereas if you don't have it, if yes. you, it's somebody. That, you don't okay, know. so I'm going to use, that's a great, I'm glad you used that example. So a very good friend of mine, he's the guy who's just trying to call me. Oh. <laughs> a very good friend of mine works in the Silicon Valley and his biggest client who he established was through Apple. Mm. And so there was a, a point where he was trying to, sell their product to another company, big company like Apple. Mm -hmm. And he ended up, it got down to a couple of guys and he was the sales guy the, on the project. And they ended up picking, the company picked another, it was a big deal, he was, he was really discouraged. Mm -hmm. The guy that he had the most contact with was, was really bonded to my friend. They had developed this bond that went beyond mm -hmm. their knowledge. Yeah. So that's, again, I'm, I'm trying to present questions right now. That I'm it went beyond their knowledge. It went beyond their acumen in the field. That had to be there. Yeah. But something went beyond that. And that guy came, without any prompting, came to my friend. And he said, it was beyond me, the decision. He said, I feel really bad about it. And the next time we do business together, I'm going to do everything I can to... To get you the deal. You know what? That That's a relationship bond. Exactly. Something is in that bond that drove him to come back and apologize. Now, yep. a lot of times there's not an apology. A lot of times there's, you got the deal. And they, people in business, they're not going to go, you got the deal because I liked you the most. Right. Or uh, you, you got the deal because we had the best bond. They're you, not going to You might that. have gotten the deal because you remembered the names of his kids. Yeah. You might have sent him a birthday card on his birthday and yeah. said something about uh, 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 his life that was right. important to him. Right. And it did something to the bond that you share. Mm -hmm. That's so important. You know what? That The very scenario that you described happened to me when I was... Um, when I was the project manager for the uh, Department of Veterans Affairs and we were doing we were doing a signage project in a million square foot hospital it's a big yeah, deal yeah. and this woman mm -hmm. yeah this woman was the rep for the signage company and I loved the designs that they did they created all of these yeah. different prototypes for the different signs we yeah. needed in the special thing and my supervisors didn't go for it and she and I were so yeah. heartbroken. We were yeah. literally went out and yeah. had a beer and cried together <laughs> yeah. because we didn't get it. Well, yeah, I mean, 
sometimes <laughs> sometimes things override it, you know. But yeah. it is so yeah. It, there's there are now that I'm more aware of the power and influence of the the condition of the bond between two people. Yeah. Now that I'm more aware of it. Uh, I see it in every area of my life. So like when I'm uh, when I'm buying something a lot of times if if I'm going Through different vendors. I consciously and I'm okay with this. I mean things have to check out But I pick the one I like the most absolutely I pick the one absolutely. that I have the strongest bond with sure and if I come back later and sometimes we come back later and we find out well the bond was fake See, that's another thing we find oh. out but you know that happens in marriage it happens in uh, some friends of mine just told me about how they had somebody live with them for two years and then they found all this stuff out. All this stuff came out. So sometimes we discover the bond that we shared wasn't what we thought it was. So the question is, what mm. what is it? What was what was what did we discover was missing from that bond that caused it to fall apart? Wow, that's a that's a deep rabbit hole because so what causes them to yeah. create that fake bond scenario in the first place? I mean, that's a lot of psychosis. Well, <laughs> well there's there's a lot, I, and I'm not really asking so much what causes them yeah, to do it yeah. because what I'm asking is what is the element? So I'll, I'll I'll give the answer. So what is what is the primary in, uh, component? So think of a bond as there's strands that run through it. Yes. It's really helpful to think of a bond right. that way. You know, the, the Bible says a three corded strand is not easily broken. Mm -hmm. It's really bond. Mm -hmm. So the primary bond in, in rock climbing, there's a core that runs through the rope. That primary core is trust. Mm -hmm. And so that's another thing most people don't think about. We're thinking about it, but we're not thinking about it. Mm. We're wondering, uh, like when we take our car to, like right now I'm looking for a new mechanic. I've had a mechanic, I've trusted him, he's given me every reason to trust him. And when he made mistakes, yeah. he always made them right. He didn't make very many mistakes. Mm. But even when he made mistakes, yeah. my trust in him way overrode the fact that he did something. And then he always said, well, I'm not going to charge you or whatever. Yeah. So the tr yeah. But if you've ever been in that situation where, the mechanic thing is a really good example. Because if you're, you're trusting that mechanic, that when he looks under there, he's going to tell you the truth. Right. And he's not going to try to charge you for a bunch of... Th that's it's, a common thing in it, car repair. Yeah. And website design. Anything like that. Anything... Because it's an expertise yes. that the normal person yeah. doesn't have. Yeah. Right? Yes. Anything where... That's a great point. Anything where we're at a disadvantage, mm -hmm. we have a higher level of need for trust. Exactly. That's why we get, like, when we go to the doctor, we, we might get two or three diagnoses. Even with a doctor, we're not... I've been misdiagnosed. Almost, I, I almost got pneumonia yeah. one time and because we, I was misdiagnosed. Oh, my gosh. We have to remember that we're hiring the doctor. They're supposed to serve us. Yeah. It's just because yeah. they have a level of expertise that we put them on a pedestal, but they shouldn't be, yeah. you know? But I want to come back to um, that trust yeah. because as a business owner and especially the people, my, the people that I coach in my industry, it's, it's all based on um, you know, the message that we have in our heart yeah. and how we present that. Yeah. And when we're authentic yeah. and yeah. genuine, yeah. then people can trust yeah. us that yeah. when we're you know, helping them, coaching them, or you know, being a consultant, whatever, that that we will help them get to wherever they're trying to go. Yes. You know? So that trust has to be there. Great uh, aspect of what you do. So that's one of the things that, that I that we teach at our marriage conferences when I'm coaching uh, supervisors and, and leaders and stuff mm -hmm. is uh, the trust building part of a message. We use the word story. When we share mm -hmm. our story, yep, exactly. the trust building part is the authenticity. Uh, authenticity. 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 That's made that word up. Uh, <laughs> it, it, that's part of it, but it's the thing that connects people mm. and causes them to trust is when you, they hear the part of your story where you suffered. Mm. I'm writing this as a quotable. This is good. Okay. When they hear how you <laughs> suffered. Uh -huh. Now, when they hear how you overcame, that builds trust too. But but I'm saying, even more than that, 
is when they hear an authentic from the heart. Mm -hmm. Because neurologically, when you hear when you hear a story of how somebody suffered, and they're not they're not whining. There's no. a big difference between whining oh, and complaining. Sure, sure. Well, they're sharing it from their heart. When right. you hear that, right. now there are some exceptions, but the vast majority of the population, mm -hmm. neurologically, you, can, you can't disconnect from that story. That's really from true. From a neurological uh, place. In other words, your brain cannot disconnect from a, gen, a heartfelt story of suffering. You and know, if it can, you don't want to do business with those people. You don't want to hire them either. Right, right, yeah. yeah. No, that's, that's, that's critical in, um, in your marketing to yeah. be really clear and yeah. authentic about your story, yeah. but also the other side is true too. If you, can talk, if you can talk to your client's pain and describe it, right. From a knowing place, right. they'll right. automatically think right. you have an answer for yeah. that. Absolutely, uh, yeah. I like I say that to people all the time. If all you and all you have to do, and this is sort of like almost like a flippant, it's an insightful statement in my mind. All you have to do to gain people's trust initially is to describe in words in a, in a language they can understand what they're suffering with. Or what uh, they're what they're challenged with, what, that's so what they're uh, what they cannot fix, what their problem is, what their challenge. All you have mm -hmm. to do is to be able to articulate it. And if you think about most of the people who are um, uh, very successful, uh, I'm thinking of some people right now. But mm -hmm. the first thing you'll notice within the first ten minutes or so, they're talking about the problem. That's their you know, and they're describing it in your language and you start oh, trusting them there's something that. about being able to uh when we hear something it's like what it says to us is well they understand me right exactly you know? they, they get they, me. yeah yeah exactly and i would even say this is my this is sort of my thing i i like to uh, differentiate between sometimes when it's my perspective or uh, because a lot of stuff I'm talking about, it's, there's been a lot of research, repeated sure. research, over and over and on. Sure. I don't even quote. But you've been doing it for what, 60, I've been doing it, years? Yeah, 60 years. Yes, <laughs> since I was uh, since I was like three years old. Um, so I think um, that's what starts the what you were describing. Uh, we were talking their language. That's what begins yeah. the trust. Just throw it on myself. Yeah. And, and so what I would say is, some might say, if, and then if they can go on and tell you how they overcame that, uh, that that builds trust as well. But I would right. say there's something that often gets missed is what we're talking about today, the bond. Yeah. Now, when you're hearing somebody talk and say you're just hearing a speaker, you, you may not have a bond with them. Your, their, your bond with them may be based on you follow them, you listen to their blogs, you know. So if you've ever met somebody which I have, we've all had experiences where we saw somebody in the public eye, then we met them. So there have been, there've been times when I've been discouraged, yeah. but there's been more times when I went, wow, yeah. I like this person. This, this person is the real deal. Right. Uh, what I see up there is the real deal. Right. And so now I have a little bit more relationship. Yeah. To, it's a bond that's based on some relationship and more evidence. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is the crux of trust a lot of people are fooled and and, and manipulated and and uh, hoodwinked by because they're good at building trust. They're good at what we're talking about. See, well, that's the that's the problem. There, everybody who's a shyster or a con man is really good at what we're talking about. There, yes, there's there's whole studies in it, like NLP, neuro linguistic programming. There's whole studies in developing this rapport and. It can be done from a non-genuine place, but that's not what we're talking about. No, but I think it's important to know. That's why I'm saying that it's it's just the beginning of building trust. So yeah. a lot of con people, people that are cons, almost all of them use that. Mm -hmm. People are prey on people. They almost they're good at that. Manipulators. So and when I narcissistic. Yeah. So yeah. when I say um, you you've got to go to the next level. And I'm saying the next level is in the work 
arena uh -huh. uh, when you're doing business with people even if it's just some your mechanic or somebody that you, yeah. you, you're ordering from you you, you want to develop some relationship with those people because that's where you find out whether it's genuine or not right it's in the repeated um, it's in a person's ability to keep agreements is where we really build trust we don't really build trust because somebody mm. can communicate well it's not a, it's really more of a Oh, it's more of the door to trust. Mm. So when we talk about build, strengthening a leadership bond or a, a, a bond with somebody work in the workplace, the first thing that begins to erode trust is when somebody doesn't keep agreements. Mm -hmm. And so those agreements are important because when, when you hire, from the moment you hire somebody, what, again, whether they work for you or whether it's a business, they have already said this is who we are in some way, whether it's on a resume yeah. or it's in their marketing. Right. You know, there's all the, you look at all these ads right now. They all say we care about you. The, the stores close. We care about you. Yeah. How do you know that? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, You're yeah. looking at a door that's closed. And anyway, but how do you know? So what I'm yeah. saying is, how do we know people care about us? And it's in whether we keep agreements. And how do we know we've made an agreement with somebody? So this is really important because some agreements are obvious. We sign a piece of paper, we have a very clear conversation, and those some people break those agreements. And when they break those agreements, the trust is gone. Mm -hmm. So the bond is in trouble. Okay, so what's running through my head is yeah. when we make agreements with ourselves and break it. <laughs> That's another show. That's a whole <laughs> other show. But you yeah. know what? As it, solopreneurs, it, it we tell ourselves we're going to yeah. do this and this and yeah. this, yeah. and then we don't. Yes. That's a that's a different. Let's do let's it do a, a show on that. That's a good show because you've got to trust yourself. Yeah. And it, and the way you manage that is different than you do in a relationship. Right. Because in a real, I mean, you still. Yeah. In a relationship or with yourself, you still, at the end of it, you still have to, there's, a, there's an aspect to having agreements with people. Mm -hmm. I, I should probably define that more clearly before I say this, but I'm going to say it and then we can come back. We can come back to it if we need to, but when, we, when you uh, trust somebody, it doesn't mean they're not going to break agreements. Okay? Right. Uh, so, so how, but, how they handle it? Is that... How they handle it is a big part of it. How they, what do they do? Customer with service. that, have, have, have you ever like, have you ever, um, uh, so there are people, it's so funny with people being late. So that's the example I always usually give. People who are on time and are on late, or who are, who are late. Mm -hmm. Okay, so <laughs> I know look, people who are, you know, we all know people like that. There's people listening to this right now. They might oh. learn something that are late. There has to be. There's a no, percentage yeah. of the population. No. They're late None to of everything. my audience is ever yeah. late. <laughs> they're late to, they're late. Some people are late to everything. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, and this is a, it's one of the most common ways we break trust with people. Mm. And some people, it's a bigger deal too than others. Some people just sort of like, oh, they're late, you know. It depends deal. on the person. But you type, can't yeah. move up into certain positions. You just flat out aren't going there if you're late. Yeah. If you have a habit of being late, and it, I mean, if you have a habit of being late, uh, you cannot, whatever, you can't run the sound for, I was going to say Bono, I don't know, I want to say Bono, Pop I, just, you can't be the head sound, I mean, right. they're just, you know, so, yeah. uh, so people, everybody who's in your sphere of circles that you can connect to, mm -hmm. uh, but it's because this is a trust thing. Mm -hmm. They know whether you keep your agreements or not. And one of the easiest ways to test that is through when somebody says, oh, let's get together for coffee. It sounds so innocent. Let's meet for coffee at 10 o'clock. It sounds very innocent. And it's no big deal if you show up five or 10 minutes late. But if you do it as a pattern, mm. it's not innocent anymore. Because mm. once a, that's what I mean. Nobody keeps agreements all the time. But is it a pattern in your life? Mm -hmm. Is it a, like, for example, is it a pattern in your life that you, in the middle of the staff meeting, you start whining and complaining about things instead of focusing on solutions? Mm. Uh, is it a, you know? So you look for the pattern that it either feeds trust or erodes it. Mm. And so the time thing is a big deal because when we're talking to somebody, this is what I mean. We don't we make agreements with people all the time. We don't consciously think I just made an agreement with them. Why is that a big deal? Yeah. It's not just because it's trust. 
It's the nature of covenant. The nature of biblical covenant, which can also be translated bond. Spirit-centered business, spiritual principles, and business principles combined. If you're ready to align your destiny and discover the destiny of your business, join us. We are entrepreneurs, leaders, and business professionals who take the power of the spirit realm in our business seriously. We go beyond just consuming information. We participate, activate, and engage the supernatural with unbelievable results. If you want to gather with like-minded business professionals to activate spiritual principles and mastermind creative solutions to business challenges, Spirit Centered Business is your tribe. Go to spiritcenteredbusiness.com to become a member today. Is that fun to break? Yeah, right? All right, you guys. Sorry about that horrendous break. That was a tech issue, but... Now that we are back, we're going to pick up where we left off on covenants and agreements and those kinds yes. of things, right? Yes. Okay. All right. So yeah, here we because go. Um, we're talking about the leadership bond and that word, what? The word Sorry. bond. <laughs> anyway. Um, the leadership bond. So, uh, so man was designed by God to thrive in the context of covenant relationships. So if you have relationships where agreements are not kept on a regular basis and there develops a pattern, there's no trust there. It's just a very emotional thing, yeah. really. But a covenant was also thought of as a contract. So from the beginning of time, people have made contracts to do business with each other. This kind of bond, this covenant bond that we're talking about is an emotional contract. Right, because there's an expectation. And when the expectation isn't met, there's... It's, it's very deep. It can go very deep. Yeah. Because trust is... Mm. Um, if, you, if you listen to conversations of people whenever they're trying to resolve things, yeah. rarely does that word come up, trust. Why not? That's kind well, of I don't know. I, don't have a, I just notice it. Wow. And when I start talking about it, people get nervous. <laughs> so we need to get more comfortable with that idea. Because what I... Part of what I, what I want to talk about when we get to that point is how do you have a conversation that restores the bond back to where it was? And you have to use the word trust at some point. Okay. Because it's sort of like the elephant in the room. Who wants to say to somebody, I don't trust you anymore? People are very uncomfortable saying that. I Even sometimes, uh, people are more comfortable saying, I trust you. But then they seem to be more uncomfortable saying, well, I don't trust you anymore. They'll tell other people they don't trust you, but they seem very uncomfortable saying to somebody, uh, I don't trust you. It's just, it's just we, we have to, um, I just think it's important to, to bring that word into the conversation mm -hmm. because it is the bridge that we have to travel to strengthen uh, covenant re or bond, uh, the bond in the relationship. I know when you were saying that, I was thinking, um, it, I might be able to say I don't trust you, but it might be a little bit diff more difficult to say you're untrustworthy. I, or the, uh, the, the behavior uh, that you've been yeah, showing yes. has proven that you're un untrustworthy. Yeah, I think you, know? you, all, you want to do what you said. You always want to do that first anyway. You want, you want to, I think it's always better to say uh, something like, uh, well, even uh, part of the conversation I'm going to get into, it's even... It's even um, stronger to say something like, I want to bring trust back here, if it's possible, into mm -hmm. what's going on. Okay. It's, but especially because if, if we go to a point where we say, you're not trustworthy, that we might have to do that at some point. Yeah. But that's sort of like, let's try to get it, let's try to rebuild it before we, if we start there, then, then, then somebody's going to be on the defensive. I see. And, and we don't really know. We, we can't base... The, and again, this is my thing. We can't base whether we can trust somebody on whether or not they're, they, whether they've made a mistake or not. Now, when there's a pattern, then we can start thinking, I don't know if I can trust this person. Mm -hmm. There's a pattern. We've been through this. We keep going through this. Right. Now they're showing you, they're showing you they can't, that you can't trust them. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the, the bond, the covenant bond, we're created to live in a trust relationship. And if you think about it, um, when you work with other people, especially if there's different moving 
parts and you're on a project and you're trying to get something done, you, yeah. you're not thinking about it, but if you're sitting with a team of people and everybody's got, you know, assignments, you're trusting all of them. Yeah. Have you ever been in that situation and then somebody got an assignment and you knew them well enough and you thought, oh my gosh, we're in trouble. It's because you don't trust them and you shouldn't. Now, That's maybe right. you could move them to a different assignment and you might trust them at that point. And why didn't you trust them there? Because you knew their gifts and their abilities and their strengths didn't fit with the assignment. Or you knew so, their agenda. Or you knew their agenda, uh, or you knew they were, yeah. you know, they were trying to assert things. But there's yeah. different, sometimes we don't trust people. No, it's not even because there's something wrong with them. We don't trust them. We should be thinking about this. We don't trust them because we know they are not good at the thing we're asking them to do. Right. And, you know... <laughs> so anyway, uh, anyway, so yeah, <laughs> there's a uh, lot of ways we could go there, down that. There, there's a lot of ways you can go down there, but I think the the key to all this is to be aware of the trust, be aware that you have a bond with people, and there's been a, you know we do a lot of marriage uh, uh, retreats, and I do a lot of marriage counseling, mm -hmm. and the research has been very strong on this, and that is that uh, the stronger when a, when a bond in a marriage is strong, there's uh, business success, there's physical su health, all these things are influenced. Like It's like the bond is at the middle. When that is going well, think about people yeah. you've worked with. Yep. When you're clicking with somebody and you're working with them and things are clicking along, yes. every part of you is celebrating and you're getting stuff done. Yeah. You're reaching goals, the performance level is high yeah, because, like and, and, and it's, a, it's a symbiotic thing. Do you yeah. want me to define that word for you no that's Symbiotic. good i think it's a it's a we're operating in that higher frequency of like the zone you know when everything's clicking and 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 we're able to if yeah. like something little comes it's like yeah. no big deal because yeah. we're we're gonna we're figure this there. out we're exactly. gonna exactly yeah yeah so let's did you have any other questions because i want to talk a little bit about how do you have a conversation that's sure. bond no, oriented do let's do it so wait a minute though what are we teaching in the academy for this because i don't want to oh okay we're talking about the yeah. what to do okay here and the then in the, the academy why. we're going to yeah. do the how well then then we i should do that in the, in the academy okay. talk about what is does that bond conversation look like and that's incredibly and, important yeah it's very important because yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. So let's talk about um, the how we well, we kind of just yeah. alluded to it when your marriage bond or other bonds in your life are working well, yeah. it really impacts your productivity and performance in your business. It's an amazing thing how that works. Yeah. Do you have any more stats or? <laughs> I think. Um... You know, I started talking about the relationship between uh, Abraham. I mean, you think about this. It was like a business tra transaction. It's yeah. one of the first conversations besides Adam and Eve that we read about in the Bible. And a God's trying to set up a, a contract with Abraham. Yeah. And so yeah. it's this very powerful conversation. And we don't think about it, but emotionally, we don't do well when we're in a relationship and we don't, part of covenant is we know what the rules are of the relationship. Mm. So now think about your, when you first started dating, like for you, that'd be what, three weeks ago? So No, I about, haven't yet. I haven't found anybody <laughs> worth it. Okay. So, so, but if you think about it, but you, you have to, I'm talking about when you first started yeah. dating, you know? Yeah. So one of the th questions that was, I remember this, everybody, you know, everybody remembers this. I'm talking about when you first started to date and you were, you and your person you were dating were thinking I wonder if we're gonna be a couple that's a covenant thought I wonder so, if we're gonna be a couple you went off on the dating thing before I finished writing okay. the sentence okay so part of covenant is oh, I don't know <laughs> it's a it's the expectation of of the uh, uh, what are the rules what okay. are the okay. rules and yeah. they're really uh, okay. uh, the rules of covenant what are the rules okay. that define the relationship? Whenever I uh, bring, we have a lot of volunteers in our organization. When I bring them on, I always, we, and we have a covenant document that they read and mm -hmm. sign. Mm -hmm. And I always ask them at the end, do you think anything else should be on there? Because it was written by a group of people. I didn't put it together and go, this is how everybody's going to live. Yeah. I, I, we, we had a con more than one conversation. Mm -hmm. 
What's the, see, this is what a covenant contract in our organization, it's oriented towards how, not what we're going to get done. It's oriented towards how we're going to treat each other. Mm. That's what I mean when I say the rules of a relationship, of the relationship, is how are we going to treat each other? Is it going to be based on honesty? Is it going to be based on it? on uh, keeping agreements and, and respect is a big one. Treating each other with respect. Uh, one of the rules in our organization is it's okay to disagree anytime you want respectfully. So this is a spirit centered business conversation because normal, like outside of being spirit centered, they would be defining it by what they're going to get done. Yes. Right? The yes. goals, the yes. objectives, the strategy. Yes. Yeah. And a spirit centered one where yeah. we're we're really operating in kingdom principles, we're talking yeah. about the relationship and how we're gonna treat each other. Yes. That's awesome. Yeah. I love that. Which is um I would say probably the the, the leader, the uh, corporate leader and writer. Uh, that's probably influenced that thought the most in the last 10 years is Patrick Lencioni, uh, uh, The Five Dysfunctions of a Team. Yeah. Because he's the one who says, you. everybody talks about whether they got met their goals, but nobody talks about whether, did they meet their goals as a team and how they interacted as a team. Mm -hmm. So that's a covenant idea. That's a spirit-centered idea. He's, he's a believer. Mm -hmm. That's a spirit-centered idea. We're not just going to talk about did we get a hundred whatever widgets sold? Yeah. How do we treat each other when we did, when we got that? Right. It's a big deal. Right. And then there, then clearly the rules are laid down on this is how we treat each other. This is our goal of how we're going to treat each other. Mm -hmm. If you're on this team, that's really good. And it's all that's all rooted in covenant. Clearly knowing. So when you're sitting there and you're having pizza, that's what we would have been having when I was in high school with, if I was dating somebody and I would have eaten most of it. But anyway, so we're sitting, you're sitting the there should. and you, you start to have that conversation. It's happened more than once, but the first time is usually real emotional. And you're thinking, both of you are thinking in the back of your head, I wonder if we're going to be boyfriend and girlfriend. We used yeah. to call it going steady. Yeah. And yeah. so uh, I wonder if we're going to be boyfriend or girlfriend. And then that's what you want. Why are you wondering that? You want to know what the relationship is based on. Right. You want to know what the parameters are. And then once you say, yes, uh, let's go steady and whatever you right. do. You know, exclusive. Whatever yeah. you, yeah, you're exclusive. That's one of the rules. We're going to be exclusive. Mm -hmm. You're making an agreement that the two of you are only going to date each other. Mm -hmm. So you make it all right. That just shows you how deeply embedded in it, in us it is. So in the workplace, when people are, uh, and I want to really speak to people that are supervisors, uh, probably 20 years ago, they really books. A lot of the books started coming out in corporate America about relationships. A lot of them did and how important they were. And you had, uh, Ken Blanchard talking about servanthood. Mm -hmm. You have like Lencioni talking about how you treat your team and the relationship. You have a great book called Primal Leadership, how you mm -hmm. cast vision, how you how you connect to people. So a lot of people, and there's certain leaders that they're not into that. They don't care about that. They have power mm -hmm. and they want to influence you through their power. Jesus yeah. talked about that when he said, don't lord it over people yeah. the way the Pharisees do. So. So there are people that just, they aren't interested in that. But the research shows that there's not as much fidelity to the mission when the relationship isn't strong. Ah, oh, another good one. Not as much fidelity to the mission when the relationship isn't strong. Yeah, that's good. <sighs> Any other? I, I've got so many gold nuggets Oh, and that's quotes. probably, um... This is just really... There's some God... Uh, there's, yeah. No, just gotta, I'm sure that you have more. Well, I mean, that's a lot, though. And I, I would say to, to kind of encourage people to watch the, what's it called, the training? The, um, the Academy. The Academy. Is uh, the words that we speak are so powerful. And what we typically do when we have a conflict, this is what I'm going to address in there. It's, it's really all about how do you get back to covenant relationship <laughs> when you're in, in the middle of a conflict? Yeah, and so you can use all kinds of tools. 
Anybody can use tools. But if you're not thinking about how do we get our relationship back to trust? How do we get our relationship back to where it was when it was working well and everything else was working well? Mm -hmm. If you're not thinking about that, if that's not at the heart of it, the tools go out the window as soon as there's conflict. You have to have a beginning place where you can start a conversation, just like we were talking about really for a speaker. When a speaker gets up, it's beneficial. If within the first 10 minutes, your audience knows someplace where you've suffered and that you can also define the problem that they're struggling with. If you can connect it to your suffering and you can connect, define the problem and within the first probably less than 10 minutes. This I, is about a co beginning a conversation yeah. to bring people from this place of fear because that's where they're at. They're yeah. in a place of fear because as soon as covenant starts to fall apart, as soon as that bond starts to fall apart, yeah. fear enters in okay, and fear takes good. over. Because yeah. why? Because you're sitting there talking to your first girlfriend and you say, uh, are we a couple now? And they go, well, I don't know. I want to keep dating other people. Fear is there. You mm -hmm. thought it was going to this place where you could count on them and trust in them. And it's the same thing. And that's the nature of covenant because God is immovable from his promises. When God makes a promise, he says we can have a relationship based on this. He doesn't change the rules and make it more difficult. So, so would you say that fear comes into it because there's rejection and abandonment? All that, yeah. And... Wow. I, when I can't, yeah. when I can't Orphan trust, spirit. when I can't trust you to be trustable, fear takes over. Yeah. Trust, it's, it's why that's, you know, remember we were saying about how people don't like to talk about trust. It's at the center or not of everything. Yeah. Everything. Hmm. But part of the message we have to give people is you can trust me. This is what I said to a group of pastors one time because pastors, I was speaking to a group of pastors. They're really weird about the trust thing because they don't, Why? They don't feel like they can trust people because they feel like they get beat up. And they do a lot of times because of their role. They're kind of the father figure and all that. But one of the things I said to them was you have to have people in your life you can trust. And I said everybody in this room, in this meeting has to have an inner circle of people you can trust. Yeah. If you don't have that, uh, then you, you're living outside of covenant in, your friend, in, the zone of, in the area of friendships. You don't have covenant friendships. So, so that's a really good point for business owners, and especially if you're a solopreneur. You, there has to be some sort of accountability and trust you know, as if it were a corporation with a board of directors, even if it's a few people that you can yeah. lean on because you're, there's a lot of decisions that need to be made. You need to bounce things off of, and there's a lot of, you know, I mean, just, you, you might, you might, uh, you might bounce things off of, um, some old guy that, you know, fishes down at the pond because he's a sage and, but you trust him. You, you trust him exactly. because you've bounced things off of him before and you went, wow. Yeah. I, I, I have that experience a lot with, I'll be counseling somebody for some personal problem who's like uh, pretty high up in some corporation. And then we'll start talking and somehow it'll shift into talking about challenges he, he's having with people on, mm. you know, in his organization. And he, they are the ones who shift it. They, and here's how people shift conversations. They tell you a problem. That they, and they won't say, I haven't been able to figure it out, but they'll tell you a problem they're dealing with. Yeah. That doesn't mean they're necessarily asking you for advice. But what it means is if you can then talk about the problem yeah. and the why of the problem, mm -hmm. then they're going to want to know the advice at some point. But mm -hmm. if you can, if, so if you can kind of, talk to them and describe that what the way I do it is I'll say well the, here's what's here's what happens is you is going on systemically often in the, and I don't get real specific but in those situations and I might say typically you have one person that's doing this uh, an instigator and then you have another person that's passive and I'll kind of start I'll start talking I'll, I'll watch their face and they'll be going, yeah, yeah. And they're thinking of those people. as I'm, So I'm already talk, defining the problem to them. Uh -huh. And they're, they're thinking, this guy knows what he's talking about. 
And well, I, I know a little bit. Do you but. think, well, obviously you do, but do you think people bring stuff up because they know you know that? I mean... Well, sometimes, yeah, that's a really good point. Sometimes they saying? do. I think they always, there's always a, probably some of that already going on. Yeah. When they bring that up. Mm -hmm. There's definitely some of that going on. And, uh... And so it, it's, it leads them to ask or bring up the problem. Right. People don't always ask directly, hey, I have this going on. What do you think about it? Right. They'll just, it'll sort of come up like, uh, uh, yeah, I'm dealing with this thing at work or whatever. You know? Yeah. But oftentimes um, we have people in our life that don't know anything about our business. They don't have any clue yeah. about what, how to yeah. do online marketing or yeah. you know, whatever you're yeah. doing. And there's still a trusted resource yes. because you can bounce ideas and they'll come from a different perspective and more than likely they're going to be talking about relationships and even or or what's going on yeah. personally, you know, like in your inner yeah. thought process. Yeah. Well, you know, are you beating yourself up because of yeah. this? And they're, it's not related to the issue that's over here that they don't know about, but it, you can yeah. trust them because they're... Helping. Well, everything is related, though, because we, well, because we live in a systemic world, and so if you have a guy who's a farmer and he knows that every season you do certain things and he's planting seeds, he knows all this stuff, which is way more than we could ever imagine. Yeah. And then he's talking to an engineer who's trying to run an oil plant over in Benicia, and he's running into all these problems. And the farmers sitting, some farmers will, might be giving the engineer guy some advice, like. Did you plant your seeds deep enough? And it may not, he may not say it that way. Yeah. You know, I mean, I'm just saying, you know, did yeah. you check the quality? Or do you trust the quality of the seeds or the people you hired to do? I mean, it's just, it all comes together. I mean, even more complicated ways than that. But we know mm -hmm. that. I think we, we kind of know that. Yeah, we, we just sort of know that. Yeah. Yeah. So is there anything else that you want to um, talk about relationships or trust or um, the bond that we have? There's so many moving parts in business, guys. This, there, you've got your vendors and you've got um, peers and colleagues. And now we're, it's a more of a collaborative yes. than more There's than a lot competition. more collaboration. And, yeah. And there, yeah. yeah. The, uh, there's more spokes on the tire or whatever. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I just would, I, I want to just summarize a little bit. I think sure. it's just that you, you know, when you're dealing with some of these people, you don't deal with very much, but maybe they're a voice on the phone or whatever. Uh -huh. It always pays to have some relational aspect of that conversation. Yeah. It always pays to say, hey, how are you doing with all this stuff? And I know there are people who don't want to get into those conversations. They don't want somebody, their fear, I heard, yeah. I mean, I've been talking to people for a lot of years, not 60, but a lot of years. And there's always people that they won't ask that question because they, they're afraid somebody's gonna go off and just go off talking. You just have to be good at interrupting. I know. You have to be good at graciously interrupting. And I mean, I have people that I tell, I tell people sometimes when, I'm, when I know them and I'm talking to them, I'll tell them I've only got three minutes. That's the first thing I'll say, I've got three minutes. Yeah. If we need to talk more later, we can. And then I just start telling them I've got 30 seconds now. I mean, that's just what I do. I don't like doing that, but I will do it. I'll say, I've got 30 seconds. If we need to talk more later, we can. Just try to get it into this, whatever you need right now, you have yeah. three minutes. Now, I do that with people in certain situations. I'll do it with my mom. Well, I would. I'd do it with my mom if I only had three minutes. I love your mom. Mom, I've got three minutes. Hi, Lena. <laughs> She'll probably watch this. She watched the last one. I um, miss you. <laughs> So, um, anyway, uh, but you know, you're absolutely right. People because don't, people, because I think part of, look, if you were talking, let's say you were talking to somebody and they went off for 15 minutes and, yeah. and then later you got a $30 million deal out of it. What's 15 minutes? Well, that's a little different than somebody who you I know. don't have that. But if, but you might have somebody I'm talking, I'm talking about the people in our life that we do business with. Yeah. There should be some relational conversation. There and should be. We have to be able to say sometimes to people, uh, you know what, I'm, I'm running short on time here, and then shift it back. Mm -hmm. I'm just saying that when you call, you can tell. When you call, you walk into a business or whatever. Uh, year, many, many years ago, I did a coffee delivery route, and people were just 
in a bad mood when I walked, it was in businesses. Mm. And I started talking to them and the whole, everything changed, you know? Yeah. Hey, you have a, they look at the pictures, you have a dog, you have a German Shepherd, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Whatever, you know? You know, and guy, this, this is a skill I had to learn. I did really? not, I am not still to yeah. this day, I will start typing an email that just goes right to the point. Me and then too. I go Me back too. Me too. and say, hey, yes. how's it going? Hope yeah. you had a good weekend. I do weekend. the same thing. I do the same thing. <laughs> yeah. And that, I think, is multiplied over. And, and by the way, they were teaching this concept years oh, ago. I'm and sure. people would use it, but it wasn't sincere. I, I remember uh, different managers in my life. They would use it, and they'd just interrupt me and change it. Okay, well, let's get back. You know, so they, know. They didn't, you can tell when people care about you. Another thing, Doug, is that people will use your name. And oh, I yeah. hate it, Doug, <laughs> yeah. when, they, when they just overdo it, Doug. Yeah. Don't, you, don't yeah. you just hate it when they do that, Doug? <laughs> yes, Doug, I do, Doug. <laughs> but, but it is nice we used in well, you know what I mean? Yeah, because it, at the level of you, contact you have with people, you keep it at a minimum. Yeah. And then as you go up, you, uh, yeah. But we were always taught that too, is always say their name. Yeah. You know, I, yeah. it's one of these things. Okay, so anyway, I yeah, just wanted to, good. I wanted to just reaffirm that, um, that the relationship are, because I know, I know, because I know how some people's motivation, the way they're wired, some people are going to be hearing this conversation we've had and going, that makes sense. Oh, yeah. And they're going to be excited about it. Other people are going to go, uh, I have to talk to somebody for more than 30 seconds. Yeah. You know, and in our culture, even though we're separated a lot of times by technology, in our culture. So let me, let me, let me close with this yeah. quick exa live example. These examples are... These are all people I know. So I have a friend who's raised millions and millions of dollars for universities. I mean, just, ton and he's one of the nice, if he was here and you met him, you would think you were the cat's meow. And he's mm. sincere. He just likes people. Mm. If you don't, let me just say this. Maybe this is a, a spirit led thing. If you don't like people, that's not a God thing. This might be your issue. <laughs> and there are there are people and who run businesses. <laughs> there are people who run there are people who run businesses and organizations, big organizations yeah. that don't like people. It's harder to run smaller organizations when you don't like people. I would imagine it's harder because it, you we put off an air when we don't like people. But mm -hmm. but basically, this friend of mine he he was uh, leaving one of the institutions. He he was he had resigned. He was taking a job at another uh, school. And this woman, he, his job was to raise money for this school. If I said the name of the school, you'd all know, have heard of it. Um, uh, and this woman called him up and he said, I want to, this older lady said, I want to have lunch with you. So they had lunch and she wrote him a check for $80,000. She said, I heard you, she said, I heard you were leaving the school. And he goes, I want to give you this. She said, I want to give you this. It's a donation, not to him, but so she goes, I want them to have good thoughts about you when you leave the school. Oh. So here, $80,000 check. Wow. It's amazing, Pauls. Because wow. his job is, I mean, because this is what he's made it. His sure. job is to know people. Uh -huh. He loves spending time with people, hearing their stories. Yeah. And he, he uh, yeah, I mean, he, he. That's really, you know, that's, 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 it's a hard conversation for me because I'm, people see me on here and, yeah. and you know, people who know me, yeah. I'm very personable, yeah. but people who I don't know, I'm yeah. such an introvert. I don't go out and, you know what I mean? Yeah. I'm not, mm -hmm. it's, it's work. I, I'm, I don't say I don't, yeah. I, it's work for me to do that. Let's mm -hmm. put it that way. I, it's like yeah. really pushing me out of my comfort zone to do that. Yes. So. It is. I, it, it it definitely comes more naturally to some people. Than yeah. Others. Yeah. It's anyway, everywhere on the spectrum. But even when you're lower, say on a spectrum in that mm -hmm. way, um, making those can you just have to make connections that fits where you're at on that. You want right. to grow on it. Right. But you don't have to be like my friend who's, mm -hmm. you know, um, 
overly gregarious. Oh, he's and, in the middle uh, of every loving on people. Yeah, and you yeah. don't have to do that yeah. to uh, build strong uh, connections with right. people. You don't have to do that. So and that drives some people nuts. What he does. So well, that's true. <laughs> that would it would yeah. probably drive me nuts. Yeah. So, so I would say on the receiving end of something like that, if yeah. you know the person is making an effort, even though it's a, it's a, it's a smaller effort than you would make, yes. but if you just stand in their shoes and say, wow, that, that was an effort for them and they are, they're, they're genuine. Most people appreciate that. And they appreciate it. Yeah. 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 So, oh, that's cool. Well, that, that makes me feel better. Uh, and I would say, <laughs> I would say this too. There may be other you know, this might be another episode, but there might be other skills if you were to lay out some skills that you have and you haven't figured out yet. I can use, I'm talking about relationship skills. Everybody yes. has relationship skills. Uh -huh. Like listening, let's just say listening okay. or clarifying what people say, whatever. That's, I just use that example. You might have certain skills, so you may be able to affirm people and not even have to say that much. You know, there, I'm just saying there might be yeah. different uh, ways to do that. That's probably. I'm thinking more, off my head right here. So. Yeah, that's probably more my style. I'll I'll yeah. I'll affirm and be encouraging or something like that, but it, not effusive. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Well, you know, unless it's unless it's over the top and and or I really know. Well, when you know or, people, you're you're that way with them. Uh, yes, if I know people, yeah. that's a yeah, little you're, different. You're, than, you have a lot of energy behind it when you know people. So I don't know. Yeah. Anyway. Anyway. Yeah. Okay. Wow. Thank you. This has been so important. And I just have to say this when you were just saying, mentioning that people who can clarify things. Yeah. Larry Hill. Oh, good. Yeah. He, he, well, that makes sense. He MBA is researcher. A, he, oh my gosh. Yeah. I could, something so convoluted like, could fall out of my mouth and he will say it yeah. back to me. I'm like, that's much more clear. You know, <laughs> that, that's funny that you would bring him up because I just had a conversation with him not too long ago, and I hadn't talked to him in a while. Uh, and I, I was thinking about my, con you know, when he first wrote his book, the uh, Dhaka Moss. Yeah, book, yeah, He yeah. was calling me a lot and asking me a lot of, you know, we were having a lot of conversations right. about some of the content right. of the book, and uh, I found that I, I was thinking about this how a lot of times I clarify things with him mm. based on you know concepts more than anything. Just, we'll be talking about well, a concept, and I'll go, okay, well, here's how that looks to me. Uh -huh. You know, because I I'm, when I try to do that with people, my, I'm not intending to say, this is the only way to look at it. I'm just saying, from, so from where I look at it, here's what I see. Well, and he, he's right there. He's always like, oh, okay. He's I know, right I know he is. But that, come, that comes all the way back to having a trusted advisor. Yeah. That comes back to yeah. having someone you can trust, yes. that you can run th things by, and yeah. you know if it's someone who can clarify, then it really helps our thought process because especially right, that uh, clarifying builds trust. Definitely. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's really good. It's one so, of the helping skills. What they call the helping skills. The helping skills. Okay, yeah. so in marketing conversations and things like that. And it just comes back to being clear, being so crystal clear on the pain point. You know, I just, I'm going to do a video on this. I just asked 50 people what problem you solved. Not a single person could answer the question. Not a single person. What problem do you solve? They're like, I, you mean I kind of like his, what's your main problem to solve when you work with other people? Is that what you mean? Yeah. Well, you know, like they were thinking about being a coach. I said, okay, what well, problem do you solve? No one could answer. They're like, well, I work on mindset and identity. Okay. So what problem do you solve? You know what I mean? I am so not surprised. <laughs> I am so not surprised. Anyway, oh so gosh. that's another, that another, is, that's a, I want to be, I want to be in on that one. Okay. <laughs> I, I, another I did, show. <laughs> I did, I did something similar one time when I, I, uh, this is some years ago, but I wanted to do a production. They used to do a thing on MTV called Behind the Music, and they would go oh. interview the, the lives of these different performers, and I wanted to do Behind the Worship. And so I was going to go do the worship team and all the people that led worship at the church, and I was, I was going and doing interviews and videoing them and asking them. The first question I would ask them is, what is worship to you? And they didn't know what it was. Oh, it's when you feel good. It was like, None of it was biblical. None of it was of any sub, it was all very vague, very general. And I just 
I just threw it in the trash wow. can and said, I'm not doing it. Wow. Because they, yeah. they don't seem to know what it is. And I wasn't necessarily think it was their fault. You know, somebody hadn't taught them. Well, that's the thing is that if we're not taught how to actually be clear in our language yeah. and how to describe that pain point, the suffering that we started this whole thing out with, you don't know what problem you solve. Yeah. So and how, one do of the you, ways how you can know, you connect to your One beliefs? of the ways, so for all those people that don't know, okay. one of the ways that they can know oh, we're going is to when the they're show. listening to somebody <laughs> talk about one of their problems and they light up inside and they think they have they start to get energy and they start to visualize in their head solutions that's one of the ways and they need to figure out when that when they light up the most mm, it's a strengths a oriented point. thing and a that's gifting a oriented point. thing is it, when do they tend to like there are times when i'll say uh, even people lean over to me and go this is right up your alley when someone's talking about a problem and they know yeah. I, I don't so and they uh, and i don't solve all the problems i know say i know that about myself I don't, I'm not in it to solve all the problems. Right. I'm in it to help solve problems that I'm good at solving. Right. And the ones I'm not good at solving, I am good at helping people figure out how they can solve it. That's yeah. one of my strengths is helping people how they can solve things. That's good. It's not, not just, I don't need to, you know, necessarily solve the problem, but. Yeah. This was so, a yeah. different conversation. It was. Okay. We, so we, anyway. We went off, but that's okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, we just need to land this plane. What do you think? Let's land it. Let's land it. We've been circling the airport, so it's yeah. time. <laughs> All right, you guys. Thank you so much for being with us. Thank you for liking, sharing, subscribing. Um, I appreciate your support, and I appreciate Fringe Radio Network for letting us be on your network. And so across from Spreaker, we go to iHeartRadio and iTunes and Spotify and CastBox. And I... And I there's so many, I forget which ones they uh, are. But anyway, yeah. we're syndicated across there. So choose the app of your liking and go over there and listen and to us. It. You can download and right? share it. Yeah, share like that. it, That's whatever. The nice thing about online, you can share. Yeah, exactly. And Kingdom Talks Media, we appreciate being on your network. As and well. visit thelifebridge.org. And visit. That's how you can get back, actually, a hold of Doug and um, yeah. see his brilliance. And you also do a lot of little show, little. Uh, snippets on facebook yeah. right you do facebook yeah, lives and stuff You're facebook and pretty good with that youtube channel and, yeah which is kind of in uh construction right now but Under it's up. construction it's up. Yeah. yeah yeah right so in the academy just to refresh we're going to actually go into how to have the conversations yeah. to build these trust bonds okay yeah. i think that's it it's going to be very i'm going to make it clear it's going to be it's going to be clear I'm give you consent. the steps that you need all right, perfect. So. Thanks. All right, thanks. Until next time, stay spirit centered. Peace out. Thank you for listening to Spirit Centered Business with Berlin Newby. Be sure to like, subscribe, and share with your friends. The next stage of doing business by being spirit centered is coming together in collaboration, working with spiritual principles, and knowing our destiny. Join our tribe at spiritcenteredbusiness.com, and we'll catch you on the next broadcast. Peace out.